I recently finished reading a very old book. It's a very long book with a very long name. It's the Oxford World's Classics edition of the Winchester manuscript of Sir Thomas Mallory's La Morta de Arthur. It's basically the most definitive English language version of the King Arthur legends, written in the 1400s. The title, La Morte de Arthur, is French for The Death of Arthur, which is how the story ends. It's not entirely clear why the book is named for its sad ending, other than perhaps the simple fact that it sounds cool. La Morte de Arthur, The Death of Arthur. The real substance of the book is not just the death of Arthur, but the birth and life of King Arthur, and the life and adventures of many of his knights of the round table. The adventures are often strange and meandering, with a lot of repetitive situations. But I am not here to write a plot summary or even a book review. I just want to discuss a few things about it that are really interesting, or at least interesting to me. For one, why is the title in French when the book is written in English by an English author? It's because the most significant written versions of the Arthurian legends prior to this book came from France. Back in the Middle Ages, the French apparently loved the old British mythology about King Arthur, so it was French authors that wrote it out and expanded on it, creating new characters and adventures. Then Sir Thomas Mallory compiled those French writings and rewrote them in English. So the French title is in reference to that source material. When we think about King Arthur today, one of the most popular images is of the sword in the stone, the magic sword Excalibur that gives Arthur his power. But in this book, Excalibur hardly appears, and it's not the sword that Arthur pulls from the stone. That was a different sword, with no special purpose beyond proving him king. Arthur gets Excalibur later on, from the Lady of the Lake, along with a magic sheath for it that makes the wearer invincible, which is actually much more advantageous than the sword itself, which is pretty much just an extra sturdy, extra sharp sword. And it only plays a small part in maybe two or three of the hundreds of mini plot arcs in the book. So Excalibur is not even that significant. And its magic sheath that could have made Arthur invincible? He loses that almost right away. A little bit about the time period. The story takes place in the 400s AD, about a thousand years before this book was written, which also happens to be about 500 years before knights even existed. So the whole idea of Knights of the Round Table is anachronistic. There were no knights in the 400s. Rather than going for accuracy, Mallory based his writing on a time period more close to his own, which the French authors probably did before him. Concepts like being knighted, being called sir, following codes of chivalry, and jousting with lances are all common throughout this book, despite being inaccurate to the time period. Even the classic knight armor that we all picture when we think of a knight, the silver plate armor, the helmet with the visor, which I couldn't help but picture while reading this book, though Mallory never clearly describes it, did not exist until closer to the year 1000. But it's hard to blame Mallory, considering how difficult it must have been to do historical research in the 1400s. It's not like he had the internet. <laughs> Regarding warfare... There's never any description of the knights learning to fight. No training on how to joust or use a sword. It's like training and experience play no role in a knight's fighting skill. What does affect their fighting skill, according to this book, is how devoutly religious they are. The stronger their faith, the tougher they are in battle. Automatically. It's almost implied that Christian virtue is like the force from Star Wars. It flows through a knight and guides their actions. Sir Galahad, for example, is the youngest knight of the round table, who comes in with presumably no background in warfare. But he's the purest, most saintly, and most ultra-spiritual of all the characters. So of course, he's unbeatable in a fight. Other than Sir Galahad, most of the other characters are flawed which makes them interesting. It makes them human, with layers and inner conflict. 
It also means they do the occasional horrible thing, even though they're supposed to be good characters, like Sir Lancelot. He's the second best knight of the round table after Sir Galahad, full of virtue and honor, nearly unbeatable in battle. The only thing that holds Lancelot back from perfection is his long-standing love affair with King Arthur's wife, Guinevere. Not only is Arthur the king that Lancelot is sworn to serve, but he's his trusted friend as well. And Lancelot sleeps with his wife behind his back. Real good guy. And King Arthur isn't perfect either. There's one little scene in the book that happens early on, and it's very downplayed, only spanning one paragraph. But in it, told very succinctly, Arthur kills a bunch of babies. After hearing a prophecy that a baby born on a certain day will grow up to kill him, he orders every baby born that day to be placed on an unmanned ship and sent off to sea. The ship ends up crashing into the rocks by some castle, and every baby on board dies, except one, of course, who grows up to fulfill the prophecy. Other than that, though, Arthur is supposed to be the most perfect, most honorable, and just king that could ever be. You know, he just murders a whole bunch of babies. Now, if you like flawed characters, and here's the part where I mention my own book, there is no greater wealth of deeply flawed and downright cruel personalities than in Greek mythology. I wrote Gods in the Dust Greek Mythology as a high fantasy epic, where I took many stories from the ancient Greek and Roman sources and pieced them together as one fluid plot and wrote it out like fantasy fiction. Imagine a strange soap opera where the characters are all immortal and have magic powers. That's Greek Mythology. It's available on Amazon, and there should be a link below. And if you like this video, please click like and subscribe.